let's see. Also, there we are. Hi, welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting, for February 22nd, 2016. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. It's been a few weeks since we've met. Uh, we had a few changes in our schedule, and we've pushed it off basically until tonight. So to start, first item on the agenda is the review and approval for consent items. We have the meeting minutes of January 25th. We have accounts payable manifest for February 2nd of $16,036.83. Also another one for February 2nd of $59,253.66. We have another one for February 9th of $53,909.08. We have one for February 16th of $45,992.95. And for February 23rd, $27,452.74. We have a payroll manifest. We have multiple of them. February 2nd, $44,212.33. February 11th, $44,148.61. February 18th, $49,224.43. And February 25th, $46,001.53. <coughs> We have two veterans tax credits, we have two abatements, and we have the fire warden and deputy fire warden appointments. Do we have any items anybody wishes to remove? I make a motion we approve the minute, um, we approve the consent items as read. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Brunel, second by Mr. Lemire. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, <coughs> all those abstain. Motion carries 4-0-0. Let the minutes show that uh, Selectman Byron's not here. It's an excused absence. And just as an update, I apologize, everybody, for being late. I needed to restart my computer. It took too long. <laughs> okay. Request for additional items and other business. Anyone? Okay. Hearing none, we will do public input sometime after 6.30. We will now do the public hearing for the tax cap, which I have to read the hearing notice. <clears throat> so you want to make the announcement about the uh, about the publication? Sure. So. <clears throat> Last week, I learned that uh, the Hudson Litchfield News, they did not print our legal notice in the February 12th newspaper as we had scheduled, um, Thank you. which causes a problem in our technicality um, in the adoption of the tax cap. The, the state law requires that notice be given uh, for the public hearing in a newspaper. It needs, that notice needs to be given, uh, the hearing needs to be held 15 days before the uh, actual day of voting. And the public hearing notice needs to be given seven days prior to the um, public hearing date. So, and the requirement is that the public hearing notice is printed in a newspaper and posted at two public places. So we, we had it all scheduled to be printed in the newspaper. Uh, we've posted notice around town, on our website. <clears throat> and when I was questioning some bills, I discovered late last week that the Hudson Litchfield News uh, failed to print our legal notice. We've been advised by legal counsel that we can still proceed with the public hearing, uh, wait to see what happens with the vote on March 8th, if, if the uh, question fails, it requires three-fifths majority vote, um, then no harm done. If the question passes, then we can either 
um, just voluntarily impose the tax cap on, uh, you know, ask the budget committee to impose the tax on a voluntary basis, and we would go to the town meeting next year and ask the question again. Or there is a process uh, that I'm not that familiar with where we would call, um, have a legalization meeting, uh, which is nothing more than really a special town meeting uh, to try to ratify the, the tax cap. So right now we're, at, we're in a position where we really just need to wait to see what happens on the 8th of March, how the voters um, either support or not support the article. Yeah, it's going to be pretty confusing, though, because if, <coughs> if it gets approved and it passes, everybody's going to question why it's not going to be in effect and or why we got to do it again. But it's unfortunate, but it's what happened, and it's what we have to deal with at the time. Now, the HLN did not charge us to run that ad, correct? Well, we've not discussed that yet. Because they uh, ran it this week. <laughs> they ran it this week. Um, I think... They did that out of courtesy. Um, I explained to them that it was not going to um, help our legal situation, uh, but they they insisted to run the ad with the disclaimer that it was omitted in error. Did they have a disclaimer? I don't even know. I remember seeing the it, disclaimer. It was though. above the ad. They, they, okay. Yeah. Okay. So with that said, and the packed room that we have of empty chairs, we will now open the public hearing for the tax cap, which is, shall we adopt the provisions of RSA 325B and implement a tax cap whereby the budget committee shall not submit a recommended budget that increases the amount to be raised by local taxes based on the prior fiscal year's actual amount of local taxes raised by more than $175,000. There is a three-fifths vote required for this to pass. So at this time, I'll open public comment, in case any one of you guys wants to jump down there and have something to say. But No, I've offered my comments. Okay, so I'm now going to close public comment, and I will open this up to comment or questions from the board. Is there any? Hearing none. We now do we have to motion to take this? I mean, we already did that. No, do we have to? Public no, just close the public hearing. We don't have to motion it again to go to the. No. Okay. No. So if nobody's got nothing to say, I'm going to close the public hearing. Okay. Next item on the agenda. We're going to do some business. All right. Um, Troy, is Jack coming in at all for the DPW no, I, unit? Um, <coughs> I told him I didn't believe it was necessary. Okay. So are you going to do that for us? Yes. Got it. You're up. Okay. So as you're all aware, the DPW heater um, acted up a few weeks ago. We had a service technician come in. They did some repairs on it, was able to get it uh, running. Um, however, they advised us that the internal components of the heater um, were all um, corroded and it is time to replace uh, the, the system. Uh, we were very fortunate that we were able to make it through uh, the weekend when the temperatures dropped, you know, to like sub 40 degrees. Uh, we were very concerned uh, that we may not make it through the weekend. Um, also, we've had some problems with carbon monoxide. We've put a detector in the building, and uh, you know, Jack has been doing, uh, you know, he's been opening some doors, venting the building. We've had the monoxide detector actually alarm a couple times. So we did, uh, I told Jack that let's go ahead. We've got three different quotes for the replacement of the heater. <coughs> I authorized that to be ordered um, just to expedite the replacement process. And we have, between Jack and myself, we have the authority to, to purchase this equipment. What we're asking the Board of Selectmen this evening is if we could um, use funds from the 
uh, building trust fund opposed to his operating budget. The cost is estimated at three thousand eight hundred dollars. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, so I now have a motion and I have a second. So we will go into discussion. I would like to say, I would rather hold off on using the fund for this because what we will typically do is roll it into the budget, use the money from the budget. From his repair line, yeah. And then we'll go through the year, and depending on how the year goes, we'll have this earmarked as a potential of how we can go into it. But I don't think it's necessary to dip into the, uh, the fund this early in the year. The, the only problem is this is why the fund was set up. And the budget was predicated on expenses that we know or have a good idea that we're going to have. The fund it was set up to take care of expenses that we didn't know. This is one of those didn't know. And I, and I think we're handicapping the fund, uh, you know, the budget, if we don't do this. Because the budget, again, is predicated on an amount that did not include this. This is an unanticipated expense. That the, and it, certainly the reason for the fund was that. So um, I really would like to do that so that we don't hold the budget hostage and, and allow them to start with a clean slate after town meeting and use the fund for what it was designed for. But, uh, I, I agree with Steve. I, this, let's just wait. We can earmark it. If the issue is taking the money out of that department, let's take it out of administration or building, building the general fund. Just tag it there, let the general fund go to the negative, and if we have, we don't, if the year turns out to be a bad year or we have lots of savings in the snow budget, we can absorb that cost without tapping the fund and we have to go back and ask for it again. Because we always have to go to the voters I, to replenish the fund. I just hate to have to do that all the time. Well, no, I, I understand. I mean, I'm just looking at it at, on, on, a, on a process type of, if we handle it now, get it out of the way, it's done. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to carry it. You don't have to worry about the budget, that line item that, you, that you know, for 11 months, you've got to worry about the 3,800 that you took out that we could have had a cushion and taken it out of where we were supposed to have taken out in the beginning. Um, I just think it's a process. It's a smooth process. I really would like to be able to start with a clean slate. We did this for this exact reason. to for, to accommodate a situation exactly like this, I'd hate to go back and and say, "Well, we're just kidding. We didn't really want well, to use the fund." No, I mean, I it's think, not about I, just kidding. No, no, yeah, I no, know. I think we're saying we'll use the fund if we need to. But if we have an extra, uh, what's what's the amount of money again? What you want? Thirty eight hundred bucks. Thirty eight hundred bucks is not a lot of money out of the bottom line of our budget. And the chances are, if because of the, so far it's been a very light, sum, uh, very light winter, we're gonna have excess in the bottom line of his budget anyway. We're not saying the hand up, don't even put it in, don't even take it out of his budget. Let his budget be the way it is. I know Jack, because it'll show up as a negative and he'll be concerned about it. Take it out of general buildings, let general buildings go negative. We know it's there and we can reverse it when it's time. And we've, we've had a habit, it's been a practice to wait to take the, not take money out of that fund. We've, we've talked about it, we've noted it, we've instructed our town administrator to make sure it's on his accounting, and then well, we go back and... I understand what that. you're saying, John, but it's only the, with those un unanticipated ones that we didn't have funds like this to handle. We didn't, and that, and I agree with you, and, and I'm all for waiting to the end of the year when we don't, when we have an unanticipated expense that we don't have a fund to cover. Yeah, so it's just a process. I, yeah. I really believe we should do it. I, I agree with Brian. I can, I'm all for let's just start out on a clean slate and not, not have to worry about it. Yeah. You know, just put it to bed now. And there are, there are things, you know, my discussion with, with Jack last year, uh, there was a lot of general maintenance issues with his buildings and facilities mm -hmm. that he, he put on hold because of the severe winter we had. Mm -hmm. And um, if we expend, you know, from his general building maintenance line again this year. I wasn't saying his maintenance no, line. No, I understand. But that's the purpose of this fund. This is not just planned maintenance. It's not discretionary. It's unanticipated. And I really believe that we, we should use there. the fund for the reason it's established. And we don't have to be, uh, you know, adjusting books three quarters of the way through the, right. the budget Troy, process. Troy. And I understand. There's no reason to tap the fund at this juncture. 
because something else bigger can happen where that where we don't have the money in the budget we're going to, need to take it out we can absorb thirty hundred dollars in the bottom line of our budget if we had to in the general in the general government buildings fund there's twelve thousand dollars earmarked for repairs for this for the major for those buildings it's not for jack's building obviously and his stuff he's got his own line but this is for all the other buildings put the thirty hundred charge the thirty hundred dollars to that line item note it and then come you know come september october november is the budget's tracking type? We go off and we move it out of there. But this is totally unlike you. You've not done this before. Yes, I have. I've supported the same thing last well, time. No, no. It, it, now that we have these funds to do this, now you're. No, but my my problem. I, I, I don't. My problem is is that if we it. if we deplete the fund, we now have to go back to the voters and ask for it to be re-raised. If we have an excess of thirty hundred dollars in our budget this, in this year. We can use that money to pay this, 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 this expense and not have to go back to voters and raise it again. I would rather see that fund used for a big mechanical system failure. I mean, the reality of it is we have a problem in this building too, and there's a potential that this building could fail and be a bigger issue. So for me, I'd rather put the, leave that money aside for something that's bigger than that. And I'm just I'm giving it out, I'm giving it out and say instead of charging it to the highways building maintenance fund so it doesn't impact what what he needs to do for the rest of the buildings put it in the general one leave it there and then we'll know it's there because that's our, that's our major buildings and we can always backtrack it later i would just hate to take the money out of the fund at this point and then at the end of the year have money left over because let's just say the winter continues as soft as it's been and typically the front half of winter is usually softer than the back half and at the end of the year say oh Wish we didn't take that money out of there. Don't we look foolish trying to put it back in at that point? That is, no. We set up a fund to do this, and now we're not doing it. That's exactly. what we look foolish to. I agree no. with you. No. Right? You yeah. set up the fund <laughs> in case you run out of money and you need to have it. It would be a different That's argument okay. if we were going back to the budget committee and say we need $3,800 to fix it, and they'll go, you have this fund. Why do you need to raise the taxes? I agree with that, that side of the argument. Then we shouldn't be doing that. But we're so far, we're so early in the process in, in the budget season. We've had the, the soft winter so far. Like you said, the bat, the first half is typically soft anyway. Thirty hundred dollars is not. It's one storm. Not even. Not well. Right. So, right. So, we're better off holding off. I'm saying we can definitely tap it if we have to, but I don't see we're going to have to. We held jet. Uh, we held off tapping the winter fund. Because we weren't sure how we we're going to finish, we didn't want to tap it in the beginning of the year. We allow things to run negative, and at that's the end different. Of the year, we, why is it different? Be because the winter fund is specifically for plowing, and you know you're going to have that. This is an unanticipated expense that you didn't know you were going to have, and now you're going to take this money out of the budget that you planned. You planned a budget with expenses. That's my whole point. So that's all right. I I, I guess it'll fail because it'll be too too. So. I just go back to like John pointed out, general buildings has a line for stuff like this. So and, and what if you have an expense a major expense line. that you could have used the thirty eight hundred for? Then we'll tap it we'll tap that fund. Well then we can we can go we can do it at any time. I, we can reverse. If the mechanical's turn out to be we can't carry it, we go I, off and I, get it out of the mechanical fund. Okay. I, I'm I'm not gonna argue it anymore. I, I don't agree with you and that's okay. We can agree to not agree. <laughs> I know. All right. So with that being said, is there any final comment? No. Good. So we'll call us to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. No. You're not in favor. Oh, yeah. To take the money. Oh, all right. I made the motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do that again. So all I those in favor of the motion <laughs> to take the money from the fund. Say aye. Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. No. Yeah. Aye. All those abstain. Motion fails 2-2. Two, two. So now we're, we're going to be in an impasse because we should now make a motion to instruct Troy to, to either, again, take it right out of the, the highway department budget or just move it so it doesn't impact Jack's Wait, did, plans. He did. He has to. I mean, that, no, we can, we can instruct him to take it out of general, the general buildings, which is not in, within the highway department budget, so it doesn't distract the efforts that he has to maintain his facilities. Because I, I know that it will happen, right? He's going to go, I'm now short 300 bucks. That's right. I don't want that to happen because you're right. He's got other things he's got to do in that building, and I want him to maintain the building. I want him to go do it. 
I don't want the messages, we don't want you doing that. Right. So I would prefer that we agree to withdraw it out of general buildings because we there's $12,000 between two, two different line items. Put it there for now, hold it there, and then if we have to go get it, we'll go get it. And by the way, if, if it turns out that budget has, at the end of the year, yeah. we move that we just, we do an adjustment in the, in the accounting. Make the motion. Um, I make a motion that we, with, uh, we charge the $300 for the highway department heating system repair to um, line 4194.10430, uh, general, uh, general government buildings. I have a motion, do I have a second? I will second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. All those abstain? Motion fails, two, two, zero. So Troy, I figure out a place to take the money from. <laughs> no, actually, he's, nope. going to take, he's going to take it out of Jack's budget. Uh, figure, figure, out, out fig, figure a place to take it out. No, I, I can use my, used to let Jason I can use do my it, discretion so. right, well, where it can come out of. Um, like I said, my, my messaging is I don't want to see him stop. So I, he's got I'm, the repairs to do, and it's just. I think it's a valid him. point. So. So. Okay, 2015 budget year end update. Okay, since since the last time, now we're at the point now where uh, we don't anticipate receiving any outstanding bills, uh, but we were surprised a few weeks ago where we learned that we had an, uh, a purchase order which um, was outstanding <coughs> and there were no expenses applied against it. Uh, we had a couple other smaller bills came in. So the actual operating budget, which is not the total approved budget is now showing a negative two thousand two hundred dollar um, balance <clears throat> after applying the nine thousand dollar purchase order but again we had um, the thirty thousand dollar warrant article for the wage increases and we had the twenty one thousand dollars left over from the warrant article that appropriated funds to Scott, Scott air packs so right now we're we're uh, still estimating that the year-end budget will come in at about forty thousand dollars unexpended. I probably won't report on this again um, until after the auditors have come in and finalized their their fin the financial statements. Okay. Ambulance bills. Hmm. So we did receive during our budget um, process. Uh, the fire chief had a meeting with the Hudson fire chief and had learned that um, whatever administrative process they had going over in the town of Hudson, that we were probably going to be in receiving a, a fairly large ambulance bill, and we received that a few weeks ago. It's in the amount of $18,045. Um, we have 22000 in our ambulance revolving funds, so we have the funds available to pay for this. Uh, in our proposed operating budget in 2016, if the budget's approved, uh, we have another 6500 that we'll add to the fund. But I wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, this is a fairly large amount. Um, I think it's the largest amount we've received according to Karen. And some of these bills, you know, they date back a couple of years. So it puts us at a disadvantage trying to now go out and try to collect these funds after some of them are already, you know, a year, year and a half, two years old. So are we still going to be able to bill for these? No, I think that's, we, we will, we will make an attempt to bill for them, but I'm just bringing it to your attention that it's going to be tough to, to reach out See, for something that's this old. So these must be the deductibles that, that aren't paid by the insurance. It's, well, it's a lot of different scenarios. Sometimes, you know, um, it could be that the information that the ambulance crew collected uh, was incorrect or not sufficient enough where they really couldn't even send a bill to someone. Um, Troy, 
Troy, this this has already gone to collection, though. But the way I thought the so it was it would have gone to collection according to the town of Hudson. Correct. Um, probably in at least two times, if not three attempts. Right. And after their, I believe it's the third attempt, comes they it comes back to us, and we're right. responsible for paying them at the Medicare rate. Right. So I, we'll I, pay I, this. And then we'll try to go collect. But our first bill, our again. first exposure, to this was pretty significant too. So was it? Right. eighteen thousand doesn't seem like a lot to me because I thought the first one we had was a pretty significant. Yeah. Right. And I know that we gave up trying to go after it for the same reason as they've already tried two times, yeah. and we we're not having any success. We're just we're spending more dollars in mm -hmm. in, in trying to get the money right. than it is just to pay the bill. It's unfortunate, but you know, the and thing that's frustrating here though is that I had a situation where my daughter had to be transported by ambulance. Okay, and when it happened, I got the letter from my insurance company, like I always do, saying how much they paid. Mm -hmm. And I called Karen and said, I'm supposed to pay X amount. Is there a bill for me? Because I haven't received one. Wouldn't be Karen that would get it, though. And she says, no. She gives me the number to call down in Hudson. I called down in Hudson, and they said they had no bill on record for me. My insurance told me how much was owed. Yeah, but don't forget, what happens is the insurance company will pay, so and, and some establishments, will just, that's what they'll collect. Right. So some insurance companies have negotiated rates, and that may just be the negotiated rate, and that's what they accepted. I don't think that Hudson even tries, Well, to be honest with you, because they know they can push them off on us. Well, they do. They, 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 have, a contract, they have a contracted service yeah. that will call Comstar that will do... The collection for them. Well, and Comstar is good. Yeah, that's yeah, the part yeah. that frustrates but me. I think the problem that they run into is <coughs> when you know they can't reach these individuals. The the physical address is wrong. I mean, yeah, things yeah. things happen. Sometimes people are here in our town. They're just here for the weekend, and something happens. They go on an ambulance ride. It's really hard to track that person back down. So I can. I mean, I can talk. About, so ambulance ride from Nashville to Boston. My daughter's on it frequently. Okay, I've never received a bill, and, and I see what the senior is going to pay. I've called, and like that's the negotiated rate that we're not going right. to go after oh, anything yeah. else. Oh. But it's, it, I, you know, mm. it's tough. So, right. my question is, right when I when I look at this, this date dates back all the way to ten thirteen. So why? I guess my question is, I mean, they're giving us a bill from ten thirteen all the way up till. May 15th, it's, it's right? More than that. Three and a half years old. Three and a half years old. So my question is, is what well, my question would be is, we should be receiving one of these every single year as far as year to date. And that's January what we're through. going to, too. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, this, I, this, I, this way we're not hit. I mean, it, it's a big, big pill now. You said we have 22000 in there, right? In the fund right <clears> now. <throat> so that would leave us with $4,000. And then if we get if the budget passes, we get another 6500 So that's 10000 So I think we'd be okay within the year but i mean if we get i would just think that we would try and i mean the contract said, the contract says that we will get the bill within it looks like 45 days but it says after second billing to the patient who does not pay within the 45 day window after second notification the patient still doesn't pay hudson fire department within 45 days after second the third billing will be sent the th we get the third bill that's what we should get. So it looks like here we should not see a bill beyond six months. Right. Right. So right. you know, uh, again, and I we should just go back. To, we should just go back to the Hudson and say, make sure you send us the bills every six months. Let's not wait three years. Right. But I thought we got. I thought we had bills last year. I know I worked on it. I, I worked on the contract a little bit with Jason, uh, just trying to keep this to date. You know what I mean? But. Like I said, I mean, you're looking at three years of bills right here, you know? Yeah. I think it's important for, and I'll write that correspondence, because I saw that provision in there, that we're not getting notified in accordance with the contract. And, I, <coughs> and like I said, I think, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's a new chief, fairly new chief in Hudson? Uh, in a couple a of years? A couple of years, yeah. And I think this is something, an administrative thing that he discovered, because he gave our chief a heads up. Okay. Um, so that needs to occur. Second thing, um, if you recall, the auditors were here a few months ago, and they were talking about that we already have a large uh, balance of uncollected debt uh, for ambulance services. This will add to it. And their findings were that you know we need to get a process in place where we write this debt off. 
So I will be uh, working on that as well to bring a policy to you so we can start to try to identify what, what outstanding debt is just uncollectible and yeah, formally yeah. write it off. Because so that will be another finding in the audit. There's another three months on that, that's not even on here. Yeah. All right, so one of the other questions I'm going to ask is this. <coughs> one of the columns is auto accident. Any of these that say yes, there would be an insurance company that you could go after for the money. If, if they have insurance. But yeah, we're, not, we're in a state that the state doesn't require insurance. Right. And 90-something percent of the people in the state have it. I, 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 think, I think the question would be, too, is, is, you know, what type of resource? Say if you have a $100 bill, is it worth putting a resource on that? Mm -hmm. You know, will it balance out the money that we have to pay them for the $100 that we're trying to collect? You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, but what I'm, I, what the question just popped into my mind. Hudson must have received some money. I would think. I wouldn't think they would go three years. These aren't years. total. So if they received some money, why are we not they, able to contact them? Well, I would have to. I would have to, I would have to check that. on that. I, I would have to. Yeah, check I mean, that. I have a feeling that, that, that they've not received any money, because usually they'll accept, um, you know, whatever insurance company is correct going to pay. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense that a bill would be seventy six dollars for an ambulance service, right? Or or even four hundred. Um, no, four hundred's about right. Well, to, yeah. to, to Nashville, probably yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Can they you they just get some more information okay. for us? Yeah. To see exactly because that's interesting. Why. Why. Yeah. Okay. Please. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Yeah. No, because I I question the same thing. I wonder if part of this isn't paid, and that's, they're just looking for the finish of the payment. Mm -hmm. That Correct. might not necessarily be this okay. to get. Oh, no, no, this is a totally different. Unfortunately, we have a liability to the town of Hudson for right. contracting their ambulance service that we will pick up the bad debt. Otherwise, they don't want to be in service to us. These bills have already gone out before from the provider in Hudson right after the service. So this is the, this is the residue, if you want to call it. So, Troy, if you could look into that. Okay. Just see if um, if anything has been paid on any of these. Okay. A good question. Good point. Because this, to me, is frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Especially three years. Well, that's why I wanted to bring it to attention. I didn't want to just put it through the um, AP uh, warrant uh, because obviously this is now, if it goes a big amount. We've years, had the auditors make comments at the last financial statement review. And uh, we need to get our hands wrapped around this. Yeah. All right. So nobody has any more questions about ambulance bills this time? Nope. All right. Before we go on to mileage reimbursement, I'll open up public comment. It's 6.33. Does anybody from the public want to speak? Actually, I came to hear the capital, uh, the cap, budget. budget cap on this. But, um, the tax cap? Yeah. We already had that hearing. There was nobody here. <laughs> it says 6.30. Mm -hmm. It says 6.30? It says 6.30. One place it says 6.30, one place it says 6 o'clock. <laughs> it said the meeting is 6 to 7, and on your website it says the budget cap. It says 6 was it 6.30 on the website? Yeah. That wrong. Okay. okay. Well, if that's the fact. Always have a second hearing. <laughs> we can do this again because it's going to take whole boatload of time to do it oh no no no, no. because we don't if, it, if it was posted wrong we actually it, it need to make it right it does say 6 30 in the town calendar all right that's I'm not sure why it would have done that and we did this probably at like quarter past right so all right so since you asked we'll do it again take two well, can, can you just explain it's a it's a tax cap to basically say that the budget committee cannot expend a budget or cannot propose a budget that's higher than one hundred seventy five thousand dollars more than the previous year. If the answer is uh, 
no to that? Does it mean that somebody else can propose it, or are they the only ones that are authorized to propose that? Well, so it's the but. So can the, I ask them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they please keep going state back and forth and state right. their name. Yeah, can no. you guys just no, They can stay there. That's fine. Just please state your name for the record. That's all. The thing is that people can't hear them either. Oh, okay. Please come up to the microphone. Well, I didn't if, you, if you guys don't mind, just so people can hear you on TV. <laughs> sure. Did you catch Peterson? I did. Lorraine Peterson. 50 Newstead Street. Thank you. Obviously. Yeah. And hey. your husband's name? Brenda Oath. Gary Britton. Gary Britton, B R I T T O N. Same address. Okay, we'll make, you know, go, I'll, let me just try to give you a real quick yeah, summary of the tax cap. Um, so, as of right now, the selectmen have proposed to establish the tax cap at $175,000. What does that mean? Uh, it it, it re requires, if passed, it requires the budget committee to prepare a budget for recommendation at deliberative session. Um, that's no more than $175,000 greater than last year's total net tax impact. So once you've, you know, whatever we've raised and appropriated in the previous year, mm -hmm. all appropriations, less um, all revenues, you have your net tax. So the following year, you would not be able to raise more than $175,000 over the previous that's a requirement on the budget committee however when you go to a deliberative session the citizens they can amend the budget um, and you know exceed the tax cap and that those numbers would be adjusted and they would be printed on the ballot and voted on uh, you know on election day so it's just a requirement for the budget committee the selectmen are not held to it department heads are not <laughs> held to it um, the budget committee would have to prepare an annual budget that would come in within $175,000. Is that a reasonable expectation, considering growth or lack of growth? It's difficult to really predict that, um, you know, until you've we've used it a few years. But we've gone back, we've looked at um, prior years, and you know, it's. Um, it's inconsistent because every year is different with the amount of funds that are raised and uh, what's actually an issue, you know, any given time. But it appears to be a realistic number, in my opinion. See, the problem is if you have an issue that you want to have taken care of, like a large expense, the budget committee can't recommend it no matter what, even if they wanted to. This is the problem. And, um, I don't want to editorialize, but I was the one who voted against it. It was a 41 vote. Because I've been in town a long time. I've served on budget committees, board of selectmen. I've sort of served for years. And it, if you put a tax cap in, then you don't need the budget committee. Because the budget committee, you elect them to present a budget to the town. Mm -hmm. And if they feel that there is a need to, to um, no matter what that amount is, they need if, if they feel they need to recommend that that's what we elect them to do the I'm tax sure cap would handcuff them it would okay. not allow them even if they believed it hmm. so it's it's, it's counterproductive in that respect that we will not allow the budget committee even if they feel that it's necessary will not allow them to recommend any more than that you know at some point we're going to need a fire station it will not allow them to recommend it no matter how bad so it's I am absolutely opposed uh, to a tax cap. In the city, it's different. We have direct democracy here. I, as a taxpayer, vote for my board of selectmen, for my budget committee, and I get to go on town meeting day and vote for the budget directly. Um, cities don't have that, but we do here. And now my position is that we're adding a layer. We're, at, we're restricting that. You're restricting my ability to vote for the budget I want to vote on. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I voted against it. But, but it's, it's safe to say that although the Budget Committee can't recommend a Warren Article 4, say something like a fire station or a large expense that's needed in the community, it still will be presented in the warrant. It still will have public support by the Board of Selectmen and other entities, obviously. And the voters still have the right to vote on it. 
Um, it's just the budget committee can't recommend it because it exceeds that that limit. Okay. See, the only problem with that for years, people look at, at the right. budget committee recommendation. Sure. That's big and problem. a lot of times they, they put a lot of thought in in night after night after night of deliberations into this. So you know when you go to vote. You, you look at that recommendation. Mm -hmm. yeah. This will not allow them to recommend it no matter what. So that's what I don't, this is, will stymie the budget committee. So why have them? How hmm? large is the budget committee? I'm sorry? How large is it? Nine, nine, members. nine members. Seven elected, two, two um, representatives, one from the school board, one from the budget committee. Uh, board of selectmen, sorry. That answered my question. Hmm? That answered my question. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you. We're just trying to learn. Yep. Thank you for coming in. That to, to understand is something, you know. But at I least you you're asking, and that's this, but. what's nice is that you ask and, and you participate, and that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for participating. I like to understand it better. And <laughs> Sometimes it's a little confusing when you look at a ballot. You only see it. It's a lot time. confusing sometimes. <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes it's, there's a lot of legalese in the way something is expressed. Right. And, and, you know, I'm not uneducated. You know, it's just I look at it and go, what does that really mean? And sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it sounds like it contradicts itself. It, it does. Right. So, so it gets a little confusing. Mm. Well, thank you for rehashing that for us, guys. No thank problem. You for coming. If you'd like, you can watch us go through the hearing again because if the hearing was posted at 6.30, we did it too early. So we got to do it again <laughs> anyway. Really? Yeah. You just did it again. You just, you just did, did, it. did it did again for the most part. Yeah, we did. You're covered now. Well, yeah. no, technically. We're but we're satisfied. We're satisfied. <laughs> we're, we're here. We represent the whole community, as you can see. Just both of us. All set? I am. Thank you, folks. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank very, you much very much. For much. Coming. <laughs> Take care, folks. Have a good night. So, should we do it again, or are we good? I think, yeah. For the record, I, I will right, open so it up. For, and for the record, it. we'll do it again. I open the public hearing for the tax cap, which is: Shall we adopt provisions of RSA thirty-five, sorry, thirty-two colon five B, and implement a tax cap whereby the budget committee shall not submit? A recommended budget to increase the amount to be raised by local taxes based on the prior fiscal year's amount, actual amount of local taxes raised by more than $175,000. A three fifths vote is required. I'll open up public comment. We have none. Close public comment. That is the public hearing. Now, mileage. Okay. So I just need to have the selectmen be on record to adjust the annual mileage reimbursement <coughs> rate. Uh, according to the IRS, the rate has changed from 57.5 cents to 54 cents per mile, effective January 1st, 2016. Yahoo. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Look at all the money we're going to save now. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 3.5 cents a mile. Hearing no discussion, calls to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? <coughs> Motion carries 4 0 0. Actually. You want to say something? You want to abstain? What? No. You can no. say it late. No. I didn't. I didn't think that we voted last time, did we? Well, we voted I don't this time. If we did either, but I, I don't I'm think we. Sure. I don't think we did. I think we just closed it. Right. Yeah, just we, saying. We voted on it this time. Yeah. Right. Good. NHMA legal records. Oh, you know what I was thinking. Forget it. I'm confused. Yeah, I was wondering what you. Were <laughs> I was still thinking you're on public air. Yeah. No, we were. Yeah. yeah all right. That's right. I apologize. <laughs> I was trying to follow you, man. Okay, we received, the Board of Selectmen received notice that the New Hampshire Municipal Association Legal Services is planning to destroy um, all legal files that they have for the town of Litchfield that are older than January 2010. 
and that's where you request copies. Um, wanted to bring it to this board's attention, see if you felt it was um, necessary to request copies of this information. I'm not sure what would be in those files. They would be generalist, you know, assist general legal advice that would be provided to the selectmen and other maybe board and committee members. Um, it could be important information, but it could just end up being more paper that we need to I store and manage and well I think it's a great idea to go through it and then throw it away if you don't need it but you won't know unless you ask because we, we had some we asked a there was we've, we've got those those opinions in our own records sure but I mean we don't know that we have everything right well does it cost us anything to get the copies it didn't indicate in the letter that um, there was any cost I think they're just, just going to send you the documents. The information. Yeah. You know, they don't, they're going to throw them away anyway, so they're going to send them down here in a big folder. Yeah, that's true. They're probably, you know, they're not going to shred them. They'll just send them to us. Won't be any saving them money. They won't have to shred them. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Well, we just put them in the, uh, the shredder bin and it goes away. <laughs> yeah, okay. Never know what you might find. So are we going to ask for you don't need a motion for that. Do you want I don't one? know. That's why I'm asking. This yeah, I mean, I think just. No, I don't. Yeah, I would think he would just. He can just ask for. Right? Perfect. Okay. VFW loyalty day. So this notice was actually sent to my attention. I'm not sure if it was intended to be town administrator and board of selectmen. But the Hudson VFW is hosting their annual Loyalty Day and Scholastic Awards ceremony on Friday, May 6th. And basically the notification to us was that we could nominate a town employee. They've already reached out to the police department and fire department and, and the schools. Um, so they're just making contact to us to see if we'd be interested in nominating a town employee. Again, the letter was... Um, addressed to my attention so I bring this to your you know making you aware of this um, I have uh, a few employees that I think are worthy of being nominated um, and if the selectmen want to uh, you know talk to me offline about <coughs> any suggestions you have uh, feel free to do so sounds good okay Very okay with that yep yep awesome Next, administrator report. Troy, you got anything? Are they here already? <laughs> yeah, we're moving right along. Keep it going. I <laughs> okay, I do have a few things. Um, just FYI, we received our first quarter franchise fee payment from Comcast. Um, it's in the amount of $16,000. We also, the Department of Labor, you're probably aware, the Department of Labor, I believe, uh, did a safety inspection sometime this summer. Uh, there were some findings. They came back for re-inspection a few weeks ago. Uh, they had no findings. Everything was uh, addressed. Uh, the only thing that they had requested was um, that we update our safety manual. And Chief O'Brien and the safety committee have done that, I've been told. So um, that's, that's a good positive uh, report when you're dealing with the Department of Labor. Uh, no fines were issued. And uh, you know we're in compliance in accordance with the, the reinspection. The National Regional Planning Commission is holding their 33rd uh, annual legislative forum. It's going to be next week. Uh, I'm sorry, it'll be on March 2nd uh, at the Courtyard Marriott in Nashua. I'm not sure if uh, selectmen have attended that in the past. Um, just making you aware uh, that you know it's. It's available for the selectmen, board and committee members, uh, informational purposes. PSNH, Kevin uh, was notified by PSNH that they're planning to do a fairly comprehensive project um, along Page Road. Uh, and the purpose of the project is they're going to replace, as I understand, all the poles all the wires um, and it's to make the system more reliable to have a backup um, they feel that 
by having uh, these that certain section of, of uh, line in our town uh, when the power goes out that might be some type of I don't know what they call it they call it smart grid technology but they'd be able to back feed electricity to the town to important things like um, the water system in the school and some of the municipal buildings so it could help us when we've had those you know storm events and we've had a total outage in our community um, this could be something that could help prevent a total outage uh, but this work as I understand is going to be scheduled soon and you'll you'll start to see you know poles marked with flags and some activity all along page road Attached, you'll see uh, the 2016 voter guide. Uh, Selectman Byron, myself, worked on last week. It's been all submitted to the printers uh, today and is scheduled to run in the Hollis Litchfield News on March 4th. So, so the board has got no, we're not going to review it like we've done in the past five, six years? The plan was not to, no. Oh, okay. Why do you want to? It's already to the printer, so it doesn't make sense. Okay. I, I just, this, this is the first year we haven't actually reviewed it and seen it, or at least seen it before it okay. goes to the printers. Next year. Next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we usually. Um, when you say it was attached here, I don't I'm gonna see it here. Uh, it should be attached to the PDF, 2016 voter guide. Am I missing it? I don't see it on the. I don't see it on the, on the portal. When you click on it, you don't see it, no. Unless it's in here. I see the. I just see the budget information. I don't see the warrant. Well, that's just the straight warrant stuff. I thought. <clears throat> yeah, it's not here. And uh, HLN has committed to getting the paper. To the Friday before the election and stuff it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're working on the town report. Uh, should have that uh, available uh, on March 1st for the citizens and on our website. Excellent. Is that it, Troy? Yep. Awesome. Selectman reports. I can report that the last planning board meeting, <coughs> Frank covered for me, and there was a conceptual review for a plan set for the land behind the houses on Page Road at the corner of Page and Cutler. It was approximately 42 homes on an open space development and another 40... 40 or 48 townhouses that would be accessed directly adjacent to Pagewood Oval. So it was just conceptual, it was to go over it and see if there was any feedback from the planning board. Again, I was not there. And I talked to Frank about it, but not in enough detail to report on it tonight. So I'm sure that that'll be part of the meeting discussion tomorrow which I will be there for the planning board tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, in this wonderful meeting room. Anybody else? Just a um, <coughs> winter fest happened on the, fort, well, the weekend of the 14th, obviously. I know Steve and I were there and helped judge the chili contest. Looked like it was a good event. Um, heard nothing but positive, so I don't know how they did financially or anything like that, but uh, looked like everybody was having good fun, even though it was really cold out. <laughs> I believe it was their best year yet. Is it good? Okay. If there's no other reports. I just I did attend the uh, conservation commission meeting at the beginning, and uh, of course, uh, you know one of the topics that's near and dear to their heart is the bobcat season. Of course, that since the meeting, they did approve um, the hunt. So um, I believe they'll be meeting next week. So that. Probably it'll be another topic. Uh, it'll be coming up again, I'm sure. 
Okay. All right. We don't have any items moved from consent. There is one other item I just wanted to um, make the board aware of. The um, Pat Jewett Volunteer Appreciation Award Committee, if you want to call it that, met today. And we selected this year's um, recipient, uh, Margaret Parent. So we are working on um, coordinating and scheduling a, you know, award ceremony, and we want that to be on March 7th, which would be a Monday evening. Um, I'm not sure if you post that as a selectman's meeting or, or not. Um, well, so are you suggest that we move our 14th meeting well, to the 7th? Or? Our next meeting. No, because our meeting, next meeting next would meeting be March 14th. 14th. Right. So, so we, could, we could, depending on the workload, we, we but could. But we have to be on the 14th because that's when the board resets and has to revoke positions. Yeah. I'm sorry? Chairs We and have stuff. to be on the 14th because that's after the election and we have to revote our positions. Oh, Chair, okay. vice chair, reassembly. So, so we'll be having a special meeting on the 7th, too, then? It sounds like it, yeah. Or not a meeting, we just there. Oh, we could just keep it to the awards. I ceremony. will not be here the 14th. I'll be in Florida. Okay. <laughs> well, when you come back, you'll be at the chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that train. <laughs> wow. So, as far as the details for the award ceremony, um, you know, I'll be working with Laura, um, and I'm sure we'll be generating ideas uh, on a daily basis excellent okay any other business any other other business well the only thing i say is because well we're meeting on the seventh month maybe we shouldn't worry about it until then but we're not meeting on the seventh well we'll have the award ceremony i'll, post, I'll probably post it as a selectman's meeting but we're all going to be here okay but we do have the election on the eighth and there are two of us that are running on the 8th. Mm -hmm. So coverage is going to become a challenge, I think. I can be there from 7 to 4 again. And I, I, I think we covered this last time. I think we actually can be there. Be, just, we just can't. I yes. Know what we can't right. do. Right. At this point. But you technically yes, count you as selectman present. But you can't be yeah, inside can't the voting stuff, right? Right. area. Yeah. Like the voting you're not supposed to go like behind the voting lines like where terry is and you stuff can like that. Man, so we can stay off the side like where the ballot is well ballot you could option. you could man the ballot that i don't want to do the walking for the pencils then that's good for me i have to sit down <laughs> come on didn't you get like eighteen thousand steps? Uh, i did <laughs> freaking legs were killing me <laughs> yeah i think i actually clipped twenty two thousand steps that well you, yeah you'll be lucky if you hit four thousand no i know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah anyway all right yeah, that's Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to make a motion that we go into non-public session per RSA 91A colon 32A. Compensation of a public employee. Second. I have motion and a second. Roll call vote. Mr. Brunel? Yep. Mr. Perry, yes. Mr. Lemire? Yes. And Mr. Bullock? Yes. Okay. So with that, we will go into non-public session. When we come out of non-public session, all we will do is adjourn the meeting. So with that, that will be the conclusion of our meeting tonight. So our next scheduled meeting is now going to be for Monday, March 7th, which is next Monday? Yeah. No, no. Following Monday. Following Monday. Following. Two Mondays. Two, Two Mondays, Mondays away. And it's not going to be a scheduled meeting. The 7th. We'll post it as a meeting. It's going to be no posted business. as a meeting because we're all going to be there. Yeah. Right. Well, we should all be there. So we just won't conduct like general business? We will not be conducting business. It will be for the... On the 14th. The presentation. Yeah, so we wouldn't... Yeah. And election day is March 8th. So please remember to vote on March 8th. It's only all of your town's money. And warrant articles. So otherwise, like I said, when we come out of this non-public <coughs> session, we will be adjourning. So otherwise, have a good night. So it's not